Between 1976 and 2003, passengers could travel between the East Coast of the United States and Europe faster than the speed of sound. What takes seven hours today used to take half that time, and one company, Boom Supersonic, aims to do it again, but more sustainably and at lower cost to passengers, all while delivering greater profits to airlines. And Boom hopes to get that dream up in the sky from right here in Greensboro, North Carolina, my own backyard. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com, and this is a story about going back to the future. Creating Concorde essentially required a concerted effort on the part of the British and French governments. The whole thing ended up costing somewhere between 12 and 17 billion in today's dollars. Only 14 of the aircraft ended up in service. Due to a combination of factors, including a terrible crash in the year 2000 that left 113 people dead, the collapse of the aviation industry following 9-11, high operating costs, tremendous fuel burn, and the resulting negative environmental impacts, among many other factors, Concorde last flew in 2003. Boom Supersonic, the Denver-based manufacturer, has aspirations beyond even Concorde. Despite its supersonic speeds, Boom intends for their aircraft, called Overture, to be 100% carbon neutral. And their CEO, Blake Scholl, says it'll also be cheap. That's key to his vision, he says. As he put it, Boom's technology will eventually mean passengers may be able to go anywhere in the world in four hours for a hundred bucks. How realistic is that claim? It depends on who you ask. Boom is currently developing a demonstrator aircraft, the XB-1, designed to prove out their technology. Although it is not yet taken to the sky, they say it may fly later this year. The big goal for Boom, though, is launching Overture, the passenger supersonic jet, which they plan to roll out in 2025 and enter into service as soon as 2029. And United Airlines believes in that timeline. They placed an order for 15 aircraft. Now, that's a single order for more overtures than every Concorde that ever entered service. But that order is tied to Boom's ability to meet United's admittedly demanding safety, operational, and sustainability requirements. Some industry analysts aren't quite as optimistic as Boom or United about this project. My friend John Ostrauer, editor-in-chief of The Air Current, has some interesting perspectives when it comes to the engine, a vital part of this plan. He says Boom is making claims about its schedule that it simply can't keep. Their partnership with Rolls-Royce to build a power plant for Overture just is not far enough along to meet the planned first flight in 2026. We'll head back out in the field in just a minute, but I asked you on Instagram about your own thoughts and feelings about Boom, and boy, you shared them. There were a lot. I would say equal parts enthusiasm and skepticism. Among the skeptics, there were a lot of questions around the pricing strategy and whether it's really feasible to have uh, have these uh, flights priced at a reasonable place. Now, Blake's claim that uh, eventually we'll get to $100 flights, I think is a long time out, and I think he'd agree with that. It's, it's stepping toward that place. We won't be there tomorrow. Uh, there was also a lot of nostalgia and enthusiasm for Concorde, which I loved seeing, along with some questions that really need to be asked about the sustainability components. Is this really gonna be a 100% carbon neutral effort? In order to make that happen, for example, we need to focus on sustainable aviation fuel. Now, this is something that needs to happen across the industry no matter what, uh, but it was interesting to see that there were a lot of questions around that. There was also this comment here that got my attention. Why did Boom choose to be called Boom? It makes us think of the sonic boom, which has some negative uh, connotations for a lot of people. Anyway, let's head back into the field and I'll share my thoughts about this project. The Boom project is incredibly exciting to me, particularly because if it all comes together, it'll come together right here in my own backyard. They announced they'll build their Overture Super Factory right here in Greensboro, North Carolina at my home airport, Piedmont Triad International. It's fitting they chose North Carolina since the first flight of a powered aircraft occurred right here in North Carolina at Kitty Hawk on the coast in 1903 when the Wright brothers made a 12-second, 120-foot flight with their Wright Flyer. And because supersonic flight can only occur over water, the sonic boom created by aircraft operating above Mach 1 can cause damage on the ground. Boom will also have to fly over the coast of North Carolina before testing these aircraft at their full capacity. And the Piedmont Triad International Airport is a proven entity already when it comes to manufacturing airplanes. 
Honda have been manufacturing their Honda Jet right here since 2014. With the addition of Boom, that puts PTI in rarefied air as one of the only airports in the world that's home to more than one aircraft manufacturer. The airport has been developing this huge tract of land for years with an eye toward landing an opportunity like Boom's Super Factory. And because Boom only plans to fill some 65 acres of the property, there's still more to go. So let me know in the comments below, what other aviation firms do you think would benefit from this kind of space? Who do you think is next? There's still plenty of land. Leave a comment below. If it all comes together as the company plans, so the super factory will eventually mean 2,400 jobs and $32 billion of economic impact to the state of North Carolina, which is why they received up to $121.4 million in tax incentives to locate here. And equally exciting are the promises the company makes about what it will offer. Faster trips, opening up even more corners of the globe to travelers. Comfort and privacy in a spacious cabin at supersonic speeds for as little as a hundred bucks? Is it all just too good to be true? Only time will tell whether this is a boom or a bust. As for me though, I prefer to remain optimistic. After all, pretty much everything in aviation sounded crazy at the beginning. So between now and the next time, See you in the sky, but at subsonic speeds for now. And uh, Blake, if you're watching, Blake Scholl, the CEO of Boom, count me in for that inaugural flight. I'd love to be on board.